Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. And today's the day we finally get a chance to have a closer look at the auction 325 that we got. Dude, it wasn't even last week, it was the week before. Ridiculous, time is going too quick, but that's what happens. So in this video, we need to work out what we've got to do to it to get up to spec, really. Yeah, which uh, it's always a bit, little bit of an unknown when you get a car from auction, especially sight unseen with all these, with COVID at the moment when you can't are you actually. Im implying that auction cars aren't in good condition, David? That's quite often why they're at <laughs> auction, believe it or not. A lot of people don't realize that, yeah, but it, normally for cars auction, there's something wrong with it. So we've, we've got to find out how many things are wrong with this. Yeah, so I was thinking for this video, maybe if we do a quick walk around to the exterior, have a look at what's visually wrong with the outside. Yep, what we need to touch up and fix, yep. Then maybe move on to the interior, because being an E90, well, E92, there's sure to be some broken trim bits and pieces. Yep. And then we'll maybe look under the bonnet, yep. take it for a bit of a road test, see what's wrong mechanically. See if we can make a big list and see what it's gonna cost. Yeah. And maybe you guys, should guess along the way how much all this stuff's going to cost. But maybe wait to the end so you know exactly what we need to buy, and then we'll see who does a better job at getting cheap parts, us or you guys. <laughs> all right, let's have a quick look at it. So, Dave, the outside. Now, in the auction picks, it looked mint, and it always does. It's like they, they take photos in a way that makes cars look really good. It's funny, though. We could see a couple of scuffs on the wheels, so let's check the wheels. The front Which left... They sort of jumps out at you, doesn't it? It does. Now, these are not... Well, I assume they're not genuine M3 wheels, um, but we probably should check. Like, they've got to be reps. But I, I would say they're 100% repli uh, replicas because the concave or the dish, whatever you want to call it, is really, really thin. Non-existent. Yeah, so they're not very stanced like the genuine OEM wheels. Now, obviously, because we're going to try and do this on a budget, something like this, I mean, you could get it resurfaced, but I think we'll probably hit that with a file or a whizzer wheel. We'll just see if we can smooth the scrapes down so they're less noticeable. So we've got some work to do on that wheel, on a good chunk of it. This wheel... It's actually not too bad. Yeah, you could probably just leave that one. Yep, with a bit of a clean up, she'll come up okay. Right rear wheel. Yeah, there's a little bit round here. Again, actually, I think a lot of this might actually clean just off. clean out. And the front right wheel is, it's not as bad as the left, but it's got a similar, similar scrape up here, around there. Okay, now while we're still at the wheels, something I noticed in the auction pictures, it's got these wheel nuts. Uh, they're like lock nuts with Allen key bolts. Now, do you think we should change them? Because they've gone a bit rusty and they're not a BMW thing. Do you reckon leave them or clean them? The rust does let them down a little bit. Maybe if we can clean them just without spending any money, if, nuts are, if, they're, if the bolts are still fine, yeah. I reckon we'll get away with it. Cool, all right. And with the wheel resurfacing, I reckon we should get some more M stickers as well because you can get them on eBay for sort of five or six bucks. And that looks pretty horrible, doesn't yeah, it, really? Yeah, she's finished. All right, so we'll get some of them. That'll be the first thing we're gonna buy. M badges for the wheels because it's an M. Okay. Uh, while we're down here, I just um, noticed there's a tiny, tiny lip on that front rotor. That's fine. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Get away with I'm that. I'm a roadworthy person. Yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, okay, now let's look at the paintwork. So something that we didn't notice until we put it on the trailer, the bonnet, don't even know if the GoPro is gonna pick it up, but the clear is uh, a little bit of, I'd say it's had some paint at some point, which is not uncommon for a silver car in Queensland. The, the Queensland Sun's really harsh on these silvers. Actually, you can see there, it has had some paintwork. I think we'll get away with that without spending any money. It's just gonna be some elbow grease. Maybe oh, there's a, actually some, a, some chips there as well. Maybe a light wet sand. I reckon we'll get away with that. So not money to spend, but the paint needs some love. Are there any marks that do actually need paint applied? I actually just noticed as we walked from the front to the rear wheel, just there on that sill, oh. quite a big scuff there. Guys, that's that's actually, that's taken a chunk of plastic out there. Okay, well they are only plastic. I wonder if that happened when they were loading it onto a truck for the auction or something. But Ad admittedly, we should be able to, if we got some uh, custom color mix to match the paint into a spray can from Super Cheap or something. And maybe we blended it and try, like, cause, I mean, that is down pretty low. If we blended it so that you can't really see our dodgy spray can. I can you get away with it. All right, so if we allow, say, 40 to $50 on paint materials to paint that side skirt, and maybe that'll give us some paint to use touch-ups as well, because I thought I've seen some chips. Is there any chips on it? Whoa. Fuck. Actually, let's just check the front bumper. Oh, dude, it's the same down here. There's a few marks. Same again. Okay, oh yeah, right. Again, it's very, very low. <laughs> like, honestly, I didn't, even notice that. I didn't even notice that. But we can, we can fix that. Really? 
Oh, there's actually on the bonnet as well there as well. That's that's bare metal. Oh, bit of rust coming through. Okay. Oh, it looks like it's been touched up actually. So what? you can see, yeah, a couple of chips there and it looks like it has been touched up and just come off again. All right. So we'll make use of that. It will be money well spent getting some paint. Things like the guard flashes that got a bit faded, I reckon they'll come up a little bit better with a buff. Just a bit of a buff. If, if I was trying to go balls out, I could replace them, justify replacing them. But I think we'll give them a buff, see what they come up like. But is there anything we're missing? The, inter the exterior is not bad. I've got to say, for a... Ooh. A Ooh. Ah. Yeah, it's just had a bit of a bit of an impact at the rear. Well, yeah. And looks like they... You know what that is. That's an impact, isn't it? Like a four-wheel drive or something it's, scraped up on it. Yeah. Um... She's cracked down here as well. Well, the paint's cracked. Oh, actually, or is the bar cracked? Mm. Again, I'd be tempted to maybe wet sand and just see how fine we can get these scratches. But we may need to do some actual, maybe need some proper paint work on the boot. We may, you may get, no, actually, yeah, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll try and touch it up, uh, try and clean it up, see what it comes up. Like, if, it, if it's not noticeable from half a metre away, I think that'll do. And I do remember this, it needs a boot lid button. So it's had a bit of a dodgy repair. I've um, never seen a boot lid button do that before. Yeah, now hopefully, because I replaced mine with a the rear view, view camera, or maybe even out of the parts, e that one. That E90. Okay, so we should be able to get that without spending any money. From somebody's car here, one of the benefits of having a BMW Reckon Yard. <laughs> uh, but aside from that, I think we got everything. Um, it's actually not too bad exterior wise like even the even the windscreen molds they're okay which is a pretty common thing on these things it's uh for an auction car it's not too bad should we have a look inside let's do it i'll go around the other side well like first impressions when we were in it the other day the interior seems pretty good there's like minimal marks on the leather. That driver seat's all good as well, I think, it's, isn't it? It's really clean. There's a little bit of black scuffed up on the very edge of the bolster, but that's, like there's no cracks or anything. You really can't complain about that. What are the, what are the kilometers on it? 219, I think. 219, it's aged really well for over 200 Ks. It hasn't come on then, has it? No, not one. Speaking of things wrong. We've 217. Got... 217. That's pretty impressive. We have still got to work out what's going on with the sunroof. I'm hoping we can do some sort of reset. reset. If anyone if anyone has any ideas on sunroof resets with E92, please comment below because you'll save me time. Um, we may also be able to just hook it up to the scanner and see what's going on with the airbag light. We'll do that once we get it up on the hoist. Yes. I think we should replace the gear knob. You reckon? Just because of that little bit of wear? Yeah, I'm hoping we can get one on eBay or Amazon. Just oh, some yeah, aftermarket one. Yeah, okay. Cheap. Yep. For hope, not much money. Hopefully, hopefully. But that is something we should add to the list, the gear knob. Yep. Things to order. The key. I reckon we should replace the key. Yeah, those all the buttons have peeled off. That does look a... It's a bit of a shame when you pass somebody that key to get in the car. It just yeah. feels like it's had a hard life. All, all right. right. So we'll get a key case. And again, hopefully we can just get the case for 10 or 20 bucks and That's put it on that. So no coding. We have a spare start stop button, which I can nick from the E90 parts car. That'll help. Um, There's a little bit of wear on show sort of the, the, yeah, the, camera. the high traffic areas just around here near the headlight switch. Something you can see can the- Clean up or does it need paint? It looks like it needs paint, unfortunately. And obviously it's, it's kind of a given, just the driver's door handle from continually grabbing, opening and shutting the, the, the door. I reckon that's pretty normal. Mine is like that. I mean, once you're- you don't, once you're not looking at it, you don't notice it, but my handle is very similar to that. Look, to be fair, from once you open the door from back here, it doesn't jump out at you, it doesn't look awful. And there's actually, okay, there's a couple of um, scratches up on this trim piece as well, which yeah. I didn't even notice that initially. Similar to mine. I reckon we'll get away with that. That's, that's the good thing about these black BMW interiors. They're probably one of the best wearing colors from what BMW. Is, what does the back look like? Again, not too bad. Yeah, no, seats are all good. A couple of these probably, these scratches and stuff will hopefully clean off of the... Uh, I think that window tint is going to be unroadworthy because that's blurring the rear vision out the back so we oh, might need yeah. to get the rear tint redone that's probably going to be 100 bucks or something maybe 150. Well, yeah it's a pain because you'll get that removed, removed and then and it refitted. Hood lining actually all looks all good I'm thinking a good clean I just noticed that seat belt I don't know what the proper name is but the seat belt arm that comes out to give you the seat belt isn't actually in that door there. I think it's in the boot in the boot okay cool. um actually the same with that one as well maybe oh, yep. i think with those i mean they never work properly even on my car which has done sixty thousand less k's probably just coat them out 
which I think we can do with NTSX, but so that they never make any noise because they do buzz away at the moment. I'd be happy with that. And even when they are working, they don't actually. No. Nine out of ten times, they don't grab the seat belt. They just drive past, drive past the belt. And I think when I was moving it the other day, I think the iDrive knob is a bit dicky. I should double check that while we're working it all out. But again, that's a relatively common issue for these, isn't it? Yeah. Well, our mum's E ninety three twenty D. It's iDrive not iDrive knob went all funny, just like this one is. But again, I've got a spare one out of the oh, parts car. E90 parts car, so hopefully we can fix that without spending any money. As soon as the triple C loads. Yeah. Lovely triple C. Cup holders do work. Oh, oh, spoke too soon. Okay. So that cup holder's missing its spring. Okay, so yeah, if you pull it out, still actuates okay. I'm probably, I'm thinking leave it. I don't think you, they're bloody expensive. You, you haven't got a spare one either, have you? No. Because it was, it was they're broken. They're just all broken. Yeah, Even yeah. mine is missing the damper. We'll see about that. It's not the, it's not make or break with a used car when we're selling it. What do you guys think? Is that something we should fix if we're going to try and sell the car? Or do you think someone will just go, eh, and if you, you can do still pull it out. It's not if, the end of the world. If you do think fix it, is there somewhere where you can actually get them at a decent price? Cheap as I've seen is like 100 bucks. Which is, that's 100 Aussie, but yeah, it's painful. Okay, now, I drive button. No bueno. Oh. Tunes though. Oh, it's sort of working. Hey. Okay. Hey, you it's know come what? to life. Maybe it's because I was wiggling it. I swear that didn't work the other day. But I think mum's was like that. It's like intermittent. And then if you're aggressive with it, it'll, it'll come, come to life. life. I think we'll need to account for replacing that. But again, hopefully we can do it without spending any money. I just saw the battery, uh, the battery warning come up. Should we try and start her up? Yeah, we should actually. We did put it on charge the first day it was back. Oh, that was a slow turnover. But it's been parked up for nearly two weeks, so yeah, true, that's actually. fair enough. Now, just before we do take it out on the road, I'll pop the bonnet, see if there's any strange noises coming from the engine. Because look, that's, that's pretty good with the interior, isn't it? I don't think there's much to spend. Need to buy the key, swap the iDrive knobs, oh, the give badge. everything a clean. Badge looks ah, a little bit. We can live with that. And by we, I mean hopefully. Oh, okay. Jesus. It does need, <laughs> it needs bonnet struts. It was really stiff to come up. I think those bonnet struts are. I'd forgotten Actually, about that. That one looks a little bit. Yeah, okay. So it, new, it does need new bonnet struts. Um, oh, look how tidy that looks. That's had some tire shine, hasn't it? Yeah, interestingly, there's a little bit of oil around the oil filter housing, but it's not bad. It may need an oil filter housing gasket. I reckon we should clean that and then reassess. Because okay. it, it may, it, that doesn't look terrible. Doesn't smell like oil. I'd say it's had a detail recently. It's actually, it's running very smoothly, isn't it? Engine sounds good. We'll look more at the mechanicals once we get up there, but there's no trim pieces we need. The wipers all look good. All the hoses are good. We just need bonnet struts. Let's have a quick look in the boot. Do you reckon that handle will work? It does. It does, okay. Remember trying it at the auction. Oh yeah, sweet. So, ah. we got the lock nuts cool. and was lucky. some needles in case you need to do some sewing. Always good to have on hand. They're the, the seat belt helpers. I think we'll just turn the motors off and then put them Slide in place them in. so they fill the hole. Yeah. I think that's going to be the easiest way. It has got an extra boot carpet, not out of this vehicle. Strange. It's got the net, which is all in good nick. There. A lighter. Cool. We have a can ah. of fuel, which we put in. Yes, we, at we, the auction. <laughs> we did put some fuel in it because it was just about to run out. And has it got, it's got a bit of a toolkit. It's missing the original BMW lock nut, but that could be why it's got these weird nuts on it. They might put them in when they fitted the wheels. Not too bad. And even, even just the state of this car, that's not too dirty. A lot of, um, a lot of used beamers, if you look underneath the floor carpet, it's normally just full of rubbish. Junk. These all looks pretty good, rubbers are good. I think it's actually, at, at heart, this is quite a good car. All in all, yeah, it's not had a too hard of a life. Actually, we should show them that. They've tape. had some tape on it. That is gonna be a nightmare to clean. That Although, looks like baked on duct tape. Obviously, so whatever's caused that, which could have just been somebody a little bit too aggressive opening the boot, or way too aggressive, I should say, has cracked that, so then it would wanna fall out. So rather than replace it, they just put some tape over the whole thing by the looks of it. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, if you've got any ideas on how to get that tape gunk off, that is, oh, it's just it literally it just scratches off with so it's all, it's all dried up. It okay. just comes yeah, straight sweet. up. All right, it's more more not, cleaning. Let's take it for a drive. See how bad it is. Okay, so we're only going to take it for a quick drive right now. Um, you're right. Yeah, we're good. Gearshift feels okay. It feels. I saw you 
having an extra wiggle. So they're just, these BMW manuals often don't feel the best, like Mark's 325, for example. Yeah, well, the, the E90 325 that you may have seen on the channel a few times, it's really hard to get into first gear. Like, the detent between reverse and first just isn't there. But this one, I know yeah, that's that, okay. That feels really good, actually. Yeah, it was a little bit stiff to go across into reverse, but... Hey, guys, what do you think? This has got brushed aluminium trim. And it's actually in really good nick. Should I steal it? <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? Well, mine's the same colour. No one will ever know. It's just a different finish. I really like the brushed aluminium. So, basically, we want to get it out, feel if there's any strange vibrations in the drivetrain, any of the wheels feel like they're going to fall off. She's pulling okay. It's nice and smooth. It's revving all right. Yeah, I haven't accelerated hard. I haven't loaded it up, but it's pulling how you would imagine a 325 to pull. Not many rattles. It's not too bad, is I'd it? Say it's less squeaky than my car. This isn't a good road. Bang, I'll go straight to lock. Yep, no, it's not doing anything funny at full lock. Doesn't stick on there. Go back this way. It's nothing. Okay. It's smooth the whole way through. And load it up up the hill. Grab a second. Tell you what, it's not as quick as the 335. <laughs> it's not too bad, it's pulling all right. Oh. Okay, that was flat out. Oh, really? um, <laughs> however, it was quite low RPM, and obviously it's not going to be a talky motor, but that was really um, very slow. <laughs> any wobbles or anything? No, nah, she's um, she's tracking through. I can't even hear any. Can't even hear any clinks. I thought surely some bushes and stuff are going to be worn out and flogged down. I thought I could hear a clunk when I pulled it off the trailer the other night, but I wasn't paying a lot of attention. Like front left suspension, maybe. But I haven't felt it once we've been out on the road. I was driving across our garden. Power! Okay, as the RPM has <laughs> come up, the power does come on. Oh, it is only the 2.5 litre, but that's not terrible. That's not too bad, that's fine. You've just got to ring it a little bit. Brakes feel pretty good. There's no... When you jump on the brakes, there's no bushes that are taking Dang. up tension. That's okay. not too bad. Not a terrible first test drive. I guess we should whack it up on the hoist and see if we can see anything underneath. underneath. All right, let's do it. Hear that clunk? Yeah. That's the noise I heard. I was driving it across here. Do you reckon that was front or rear? I reckon that's front left control arms. Okay. We'll see soon. I could be wrong. Or it could be like something in the shock, maybe. Yeah, true. Hopefully we can see when we get on the hoist. All right. I'll get that door unlocked and we'll get it up. Aftermarket springs. Ah. Okay, so we can see some oil leaks. So we're going to pop the under tray off and have a better look. But it has got yellow springs all the way around. And I don't reckon these are original. They're sash shocks. I reckon it's had suspension done recently. Hmm. Somebody spent some money. All right, let's get these trays off. All right, so we have the under tray off and we've got some oil leaks. Lots of oil leaks. I'm guessing, I'm guessing it had a hose down at the auction, which is why the top looks so, so clean. Nice. Yeah. But I reckon the only way we're gonna work out what's leaking is to give it a clean, give it a, de <laughs> give it a degrees and run it again. But I mean, it's a good chance it's oil filter housing gasket or rocker cover. Uh, let's hope it's oil filter housing gasket. Both cheap items, just time consuming. It's a lot of oil. I have done both on Mark's car. And dude, this is what Mark's car was like before we did them. Okay. And we did them at separate times, but everything looks, but I mean, it's covered in oil, so it's not gonna corrode, but. Yeah, it does look fresh, I'll give you that. Everything's pretty clean. Like, look at this rubber. Yeah, it's still true. green. Engine mounts look good. Again, it doesn't look like it's an over 200,000 Ks. That's in pretty good nick. 
It's it's that? just a good car at heart. All the rubber still looks really, really new. Why can we read the, the labels on the gearbox still? God, the oil. Oh, these catalytic converters. Oh yeah, okay, so there's, it looks like the oil's pooling at the front. I can see it, it's rocker cover here. So that's why it's covering everything. So I'm guessing I'm gonna have to do rocker cover and, oh, maybe sump as well. Fuck, pardon my French. And the sump. Sump is leaking. Bugger. So you're gonna have to do sump gasket, rocker cover gasket, Ooh. and oil filter house. It's just gonna need so everything. To do the sump, subframe's gotta come off? Probably, although even that doesn't look like anywhere near as bad a job as it does on the M54. I tell you what, there's less stuff under here. Compared to your 335, everything just looks a bit more uh, lightweight. Yeah, toyish. Which I guess it is. Okay, so we've got a few nasty oil leaks. Again, do, these oil leaks could be why it was at auction. I mean, they're expensive if you have to pay a mechanic True. to do it. So if this was a car yard car, they would just go, don't worry about it. Yeah thousand dollars in labor no thank you so that's good i'm glad we found some problems that we can sort of diy fix yeah, the car it doesn't look like it's hiding anything sinister no um one thing i do want you to do can you get a pry bar onto those front control arms i just want to see what those bushes are like give them a wiggle these suckers i reckon it could be them or it could be sway bar link pins <gasps> hmm Hmm. Or it could be a dodgy install on the aftermarket shocks. Yeah, these these ones? Yeah, them first. No, they're good. That's solid ass, yeah. And that's then that, the big ones at the front. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, so. that's not much not much pressure doing that. Okay, obviously the car braking is gonna move that pretty easy. So we need to do those bushes. Oh, you can do it with your hand. Yeah, on the wheel, yeah. Okay. That's just Dave pushing the wheel. Oh, don't push a hoist over. I installed this. <laughs> yeah, I just check that side. Mm, looks about the same. Yeah. Yep. Okay, right. so we've got to do front control arms. They're cheap as chips on eBay. Dude, all right, we've got a load of gaskets to order, some control arms. The tires are all like nearly new. I cannot believe how much rubber there is on these. That's awesome. Um, I did have a quick look at the back off camera when you were taking the under trays off and everything looks all pretty good back here. Do you want to just have a quick poke around with the pry bar on a few bushes at the back? Just make sure there's no play in anything. Solid. Yeah. Solid. It looks good. Solid, like it's really, really tight. I think those thrust arms are like, I think all of our cars we've had to replace them already, haven't we? we literally have, yeah, and I'm gonna do... You know what we could do? I could get some M3 ones for my car and then put mine on here. Because mine are fine, I just want better ones. It's a cheap way You'd of... probably benefit from the M3 ones, wouldn't you? Yeah. All right, all right. All right, let's have a quick recap. Dude, I'm... It's so tidy underneath. Other, obviously, other than the oil leaks, but what do you expect? We are so spoiled with the cars we have here. So that's it. I think this is actually a good car. At heart, I really feel like this has been well looked after for most of its life. Like, considering it's on 217,000 Ks, it doesn't look like it underneath. Apart from a few oil leaks, which, yeah, which just happens. happens. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I also think those oil leaks could be why it's ended up at auction. auction. Yeah, because, they, I mean, if you, especially in Australia where mechanics don't love Euro stuff, if you get someone that's not too familiar with them, they'll quote big labour rates to do something like this. Like, they could quote four to six hours. Or more. Yeah. And like you said, and they'll be, obviously they won't be ser searching for the cheapest aftermarket gaskets and stuff. There's a good no. chance I'll use genuine gaskets. And you, like you said, if a dealer, if this comes to a dealer as, as a trade-in or something, and then they got quoted eight hours labor, that alone would be enough. I go, okay, well this car isn't gonna be viable. Let's just send it to auction. It gets their deal done and the car's out of their hair. They ain't gonna worry about it. Yeah. I reckon we're gonna do, do all right at not completely doing our nut on this cost-wise. Um, just to recap what we think we're gonna need to buy. So we're gonna need the M badges for the wheels. Yep. Some spray paint mixed up. Yep. We're going to need to get the rear window tint done. Yep. Uh, we're going to need to get a key, key case. Case, yep, cover. Um, we're going to swap the iDrive buttons, the iDrive knob. Yep. We're going to... Bonnet struts. Do bonnet struts. We're going to need... The handle. The handle button, which won't cost anything. Yep. Um, underneath, we're going to need a sump gasket, a rocker cover gasket, and an oil filter housing gasket. And hopefully, I'll try and get the balls to buy some M3 arms for mine. Okay, it's and then quite do the swap. expensive, and I'll just put my arms on this. Okay, cool. Um, what else? I think that's it. 
doesn't need tyres, suspension all looks good, the rest of the bushes look good. The rest of the, well, plus obviously some elbow grease, polish, cut polish, finishing polish. It's not going to cost anything. No, we've got it all. It's just uh, more stuff to add to the list. Now, I want to challenge you guys. I'd like to, I want you guys to have a bit of a guess. Now, don't spend hours checking pricing. Just free ball it. Put a guess down below. What do you think all these parts are going to cost? Um, and I'll do another video once they've all arrived, apart from the window tint. Yeah. But we'll do everything and then we'll get the window tint done. Um, yeah, we'll do a video on everything, what it's cost and the cheapest places I could find them. And I'd love to see how close you guys guess to the actual cost. So we'll end this off here because this is a quite a long video, but an update on the 325 manual. Ah, I do just want to touch on when we actually arrived with this vehicle, we'd just been speaking to Gresham and a lot of 325s ah. overseas, you guys are lucky and you actually have the three litre version of this engine. Uh, and you can change the manifold, remap them, and bam, you've got an extra 30 kilowatts, I think, which is huge. Unfortunately, in Australia, until I think late 08, all of our 325s were the 2.5 litres. So we can't add some cheap power to this. It will stay the two and a half litre, but not the end of the world. I kind of want to turn it into a nice car, and I can see our old man taking this over his 330. You reckon? Well, it's actually. Maybe. It's got the manual already. Oh, I've got to get the gear knob as well. Okay, yeah, and just I another gear one. Yeah. Okay, it's um, it's actually drove okay just up and down the street there. So once it's all back together, I wouldn't mind, especially if you guys want to see it, actually doing a zero to sixty on it and then seeing what it's like. Well, I don't think we've updated the channel yet, but we have driven his three thirty with the M uh, with the sport, sport button sport on mode. the on the DSG. Is DSG? No, no, it's not DSG. SMG. It's SMG. <laughs> um, and it goes way better once that car's in sport mode. Yeah. But I reckon it goes similar to this. There's a good chance. I reckon there's not much in it. And at least with this, you do have a proper Clutch. manual to row. You're in, you can control it. Anyway, we'll end it off there. Thank you very much for watching. Let us know guesses below on reconditioning costs. Don't forget, we're not going to account for any labour. We're cheap. <laughs> you have no idea. Um, but yeah, let us know what you think we're going to spend on parts and materials to get this thing up to scratch, ready to be passed on to its next loving owner. We'll end it off there. Start doing a shopping list. Thank you very much. See you in the next one. Peace. And we almost forgot, uh, just hooked ISTA up to it. So let's see how many fault codes we can actually retrieve from the lovely thing. Okay, so the errors are finally up on the screen. Uh, looks like we've got an issue with the MOS system. Uh, the CD changer, the telephone module, and the video module are not communicating. And hopefully you can see me, but that actually happened in my car and it ended up being the, I think it was the MOLF module, and it basically caused an issue with the fiber optic loop or the, what do they call it? The Most Ring. Um, so it's actually not too bad of an issue on this car because it has the basic stereo. We've still got audio. Uh, it just means we can't use the CD stacker or the telephone unit. Um, we should be able to get around the error by installing a MOS loop, but it's something to think about or even consider later on because it's not really going to be an issue unless you want to use the CD stacker, which nobody really does these days. The other issues we've got, we've got that safety battery terminal and an FRM right side sensor faulty. Now these are codes we're gonna have to look up and do a bit more delving on, but if we delete fault memory and we'll just see what comes back. Okay, I've just done another scan, a full scan. I've noticed the MRS safety battery terminals come back again. I reckon that's gonna be the problem with the airbag. So I've just got David in the back now. He's just gonna check that terminal over and we'll see if we can get rid of that airbag light. So David has just wiggled that terminal. Oh, I'm gonna have to juggle a bit. Just turn the car back on. And airbag light fixed. So it's just that terminal. It could have been a dodgy connection. I've had a similar problem on my car. Amazing. I'll show you what that plug is actually. Okay, so I'm not sure if we're gonna do this in a separate video, but I've just found a thread on E90 posts on how to reset the sunroof when you have the sunroof error that we're currently having. So I'm gonna try and go through the process. What you need to do is basically turn the car on, don't push anything, which I haven't apart from iDrive, and then you have to hold the up button on the sunroof for 15 to 20 seconds. So I'm gonna try that. We're holding it now. That's 10 seconds. Okay, now according to this thread, it should go through and fully open and fully close and that should initialize the sunroof and fix the error that we're getting.
That was it. Error's gone from the dashboard. It didn't bong. I like to get my bongs, the BMW error bongs, but let's see if it now, yes. Nice. Another thing ticked off the list. So we fixed the airbag and the sunroof, Dave, without spending any money. Zero dollars. Oh, ah, that's it, you just gotta push it all the way. It now opens and closes fully automatically. Fantastic. I love BMWs. Which again, just those errors could have been, again, what would make a dealer go, this car's too hard, it's gonna be too costly. Let's just send it to, uh, to the auction. Winning. Done. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.